Hello and welcome to my series on Israeli Air Force Leader. Um, this is an extremely short video that I made after finishing day one of the campaign that I was showing for you. I realized I made a lot of mistakes. Well, maybe not a lot, but for a person who's making the video, it feels like a lot. And I also, I wanted to put this video in uh, largely because I'm not a, a video maker this is the first time I've ever done something like this. I'm starting to appreciate how challenging it is. And I made a few mistakes. So I wanted to put this video up front to you know, explain some things. First, when you watch my video part one, you'll see me go through the baggies for the different components in the game. And I go through this really elaborate explanation of how to sort everything. And I thought I was Mr. Cool and, and um, I just want you all to just skip over that because Dan Burson explained to me that for every campaign there are just enough components in the game that you can just make your own. So there's a campaign called 2022 Armageddon. You can actually make a baggie with all the components that you need for that campaign and it's all self-contained. And um, for example, we were doing 1981 Lebanon, and so all those components are in my draw bag, and this is my bandit pool, if you will, and it is self-contained. I can just put all of this in a baggie and put it away when I'm done playing the game. And so every single campaign that comes with the game has its own list of components. So the 2006 campaign, uh, you can just put it all in its own baggie. I was not aware of that, so just completely ignore my section where I talk about components and how to sort them. Uh, it makes no sense, and this is so much more superior than the way I was recommending. But there were two major errors in the game. Well, three. Let me go over the quick one. Number one, I didn't realize that when I turned my phone like this or like this, that my video uh, rotates uh, on the screen and you're watching the game sideways. I've been trying to use the editor to fix it. As I said, I'm not real good at this. So my apologies. There are going to be spots in my videos where the game is sideways like this. And I've learned my lesson. I'm holding the phone one direction and only one from now on. <laughs> so the other two were um, rules. One was a rule I knew all along but just ignored. And that was by mistake. And that was this infra. So this particular field, when it says plus one, um, we destroyed two targets in day one. We destroyed a military base and we destroyed a forward base. Um, I did not realize that when it says 13 here, that means you need 13 hits to destroy this target. That infra of plus one makes that a 14 and this turns into a seven. Um, we did not play it that way. It was my mistake. I knew that rule and I just completely missed it. That completely changes how we would have approached that mission. And some of the choices I made while I was showing you that mission. Um, uh, I can't go, I mean, other than redoing the entire video, I can't go back and fix it. So for day one, there's just a giant asterisk next to it. From day two on, uh, it will be played correctly. The other one was a rule that I just misunderstood when I read the rule book. It's new to, the, to Israeli leader. And it's this rule with the components. So let me get my campaign sheet out of the way. So when you have your target and you draw, you know, your campaign bits, uh, every now and then you get a, um, and of course none of those are it. When you drew one of these, it has a plus one range to it. So see how it has two range there? Um, so let's say that that was in the northern approach. Um, as I explained, the rules for this game require you to draw one of these. So I draw one of those and I put it there. Well, that's not a, a great example. Let me get a different one. This one. So I would put it there like that and then explain to you that if you're approaching from the north, um, it can see you and hit you, and you can see it and hit it, but if you were approaching it from the south, it has these blind spots. So 
I accurately explained all of that. The part that I made the mistake on is, let's say this was on the south approach, like so. What I did was is I grabbed this token and I laid it next to it and I had the arrow pointing up, thinking that the arrow always points up. That is not true. In the rule book it explicitly states that the rule book, or sorry, it explicitly states that the arrow has to point down like that. This is a huge change, <laughs> and that drastically affected the first mission uh, that I did on day one. It it's completely changes the outcome. I couldn't even tell you how it would have turned out knowing this, and you know, it we may have still destroyed the target. We may not have still destroyed the target. It is so radically different. So anyways, I apologize for the mistakes. Um, that's the gist of it. Um, I did, after uh, listening to the video, realize that when I used my little pointer, which is a chopstick, <laughs> um, that this is very loud. I didn't realize that as I was making the video, so I apologize if that annoys you as well. Um, again, uh, there's so much to learn about this game, so much to keep track of. I hope that you still found it helpful. This is an obscure game, meaning that you know, you're not going to see some of the primary people like Ricky Royal or whoever make a video on this. So that's why I chose to do this. And I'm learning to appreciate very much how much hard work and effort they put into their videos. Because this is not, um, not easy. And uh, anyways, if you like it, I may continue this and go into day two. Uh, it does take a significant amount of time to get these out to you. So um, again, thank you very much uh, for your you know, for your attention, and I hope that you can at least get something out of it. Uh, sorry if I get long-winded, like Rado sometimes. Um, and, uh, you know, thanks in advance for your, um, your forgiveness for these couple of mistakes that I made.